Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to look at the Nerd Red uh, chart dashboard Nerd. It's actually part one of a two-part video series. In, in the first part we're going to look at real-time data and how to graph real-time data. And in the second part we're going to take a look at uh, graphing uh, stored data, uh, data you're getting from a, a file system or from a, a SQL database. And we're going to look at how you uh, display that into a graph. So this is the flow we're going to use and I'm simulating data using the inject node and this inject node is in injecting a value of 1 every 1 second. It comes into this function node which will store the data and will also add the data so it's a summation node and if I show you over here on the right hand side you can see the values going up every 1 second to 274, 275 and that sends it into the chart node and the chart node is going to display those values on on the chart and if we look at the actual chart itself you can see here it produces a straight line graph like this and you can see it auto scales I'm not worried about the scale here I haven't set the scale and you can see the time along along the bottom just notice it auto scale again there to new values now this is a very common application for the for the chart node. You have real-time data coming in and you display time on the x-axis and the value on the y-axis. And if I look at the configuration of the chart node itself, it's all default. I'm using a line chart and x-axis displays the last hour. Now obviously you adjust this uh, depending on your, your time scale and we'll see this later when we're looking at um, retrieving data from a database and you can choose the colors here uh, the, the legend here is basically what what appears on here so if I change that so as it displays it let's show it and we're done and we'll deploy it you can see here it appears there it's called site 1 now that's the value of the topic so if I look at the topic here uh, it's actually not there it's on the inject node the topic the topic is site 1 so very simple chart node so let me disable this one now and we'll enable the second one Now the second one's very much like the first one. We've got a summation node here. Uh, the only difference is now we've got two values, so we've got site one and site two. Uh, this I modeled on um, a flow I've got that monitors my websites. It monitors the the site speed uh, of those websites, and it actually displays it in a graph and logs it to a database. So again, we just got site one injecting a value. It's injecting every four seconds and it's a value of 1 and site 2 injecting a value of 1 every 5 seconds. I've got them at different times just so we can actually see it. And again it goes into this node here which sums it all up. If you're wondering what the init or the clear is it's just so I, I can actually restart this um, this flow from zero or the, the graph from zero. So let's have a look at the display. I have to deploy it first. You can see here I've got two sites, site one and site two. And you can see here the values again in real time that come along. And notice again I'm not setting the x the y axis, it's auto auto set and again these are going to produce more or less straight line graphs so to display two values on the same on the same chart all you need to do is send them in as two, two separate topics so you can see here this one is set to site one the topic and this one is set to site two the topic and if we actually look at the chart node itself you can see here this is the first color this is the second color you can remember from the there they're blue and orange if I want to change any one of these then I just click on this and I select the color 
So if I change it to red and deploy it, there you can see it's red or maroon. Okay, if you look over here on the information for the chart node, it says if you want to clear it, you send the payload with a, a blank array, and that's what this init function does. Um, why I've used init and clear, I don't know. I uh, I use clear on this one, and I'm using init on this one. Uh, you only need one. So if I just click on this, it sends a, a blank array in there, and you can see we start again on a, a chart. So let's move on to the final example in this video. Um, the line chart isn't the only thing you can display here. We can have a bar chart, a bar chart H, whatever the difference is, I don't know, a pie chart, a polar area chart, and a radar chart. And depending on the data, uh, you'll use a, a different one of these. Now, I'm just going to show you the bar chart. I will show you the, the other charts very quickly, but uh, they don't actually all make sense with the data I'm going to inject into them. So what I've got here now is I've set the y-axis at, at 0 and, the, and a maximum of 100, so I'm setting the, the y-axis this time. I'm showing the, the leg in there, so we're going to see what's going on. And that's all I'm doing on that. Now let's have a look at the data I'm sending into it. This time I've got an array of data and I'm sending in two values and this is basically simulating um, maybe uh, pressure gauges. So we've got one pressure gauge of 50, the other one 60. It could be um, volume measurements like a tank and we've got here 50, 55, 60 and it's going back down to 55. So it's basically going to cycle through this through this data. So I've got four four data inputs. And done. And this one is just a basically the inject node is just going every five seconds, it's just um, triggering the data. Okay, so deploy it and let's have a look at our chart and so you can see it here see it's 55 now it's gone to 60 and you can see here if I hover over you can see it's called tank 1 and this one's called tank 2 now it's going back down again so that's what it looks like on the bar chart and the bar chart is a very good way of viewing this kind of data uh, let's have a look what it looks like when viewed, sorry, when viewed as a pie chart, okay, you see it moving there. Uh, it doesn't really make much sense as a pie chart, but you, at least you can see what it looks like. And again, I'm clicking on the wrong one. And let's look what it looks like on a radar chart and there you can see it on a radar chart doesn't look very good on a radar chart doesn't make sense displaying this kind of data uh, on this type of chart so you choose uh, obviously the chart according to to your data the data you're having on there and what we've looked at here is real-time data in the next video we're going to take a look at uh, displaying stored data on the chart so that's the end of this video. If you've got any comments on the video, then please leave them below. If you like the video, then click on the like button below. And you can always subscribe to the channel and click on the no notifications bell and get notified when I publish new videos. And if you do use social media and like to share the video on social media, then please feel free. Until next time, goodbye.